we do care about the ongoing COVID situation mm -hmm. in the NFL. I guess that's the irony of pretending we don't care off the top. There are many things to not care about. There is one thing to care about. It's the pandemic, regardless of, and far more important, the public health issues. And I saw earlier today that the death toll in the United States has crossed 800,000. It continues to sicken and kill people. We continue to become increasingly numb to it. And in the NFL, players are testing positive like never before. Yesterday's 37 positives, accompanied by 25 additional positives today. The Rams closed their training facility and have entered the intensive NFL protocols. The Browns are in the enhanced protocols, all meetings virtually. It's back to like it was last year when we would have maybe one at a time like this. Now we've got multiple, and there's no sense that it's slowing down, Shireen. Yeah, Washington has 10 players now on the list. Browns put eight on there today. So, yeah, it's we're seeing it out of Thanksgiving. The numbers have spiked since Halloween. Uh, whether that's people being indoors when it's gotten colder or going to parties or whatever it is. And, you know, there's there's also, frankly, Mike, as you said, you know, we've just gotten numb to the COVID protocols, not wearing masks and not doing some of those things. I mean, I do it most of the time, but I can't say I do it all the time, not 100 percent of the time. And it's something that you, you, you really need to be conscious of and and go do it. And so. I don't know what the answer is for the NFL, but the track that we're on right now, it's going to affect games. It's going to affect teams getting in the playoffs or not getting in the playoffs. And frankly, it could affect the playoffs and the Super Bowl. But the NFL has made it very clear. They're going to play the games no matter what. Figure out some players. If you have to sign them off the street to come play, that's what you're going to do. We are not canceling or postponing games. The reality for the NFL as it currently stands and I said this several weeks back and the teams are as bunched together as they were then the Super Bowl champion is going to be the team that manages to yep. stay healthy that manages to avoid COVID that manages to rise up at one key moment there's going to be some key play some decision bounce the ball whatever and also they're going to benefit from the bad calls that we see from time to time because for every team that gets stung by a bad call there's a team that benefits from the bad call. Those things all go into the blender and you press the buttons, you crunch the numbers, and those are the factors that will determine who wins it all this year. But that reality of the vague possibility, any given moment, any given day, a player of significant name recognition landing on COVID-19 reserve is there. And, you know, Shireen, I really do believe they need to start considering the bubble concept for the postseason. I know that there was strong resistance to it last year by the NFL Players Association, but if you want to get these games in, if you want to get these games played with the highest level of talent, see, here's the problem. They're going to play the games, as you said. I don't know what the magic minimum number is between 11 and 40 players who are able to suit up and play, but I have a feeling it's closer to 11 than 40. There's 69 total players, even the Lions this weekend, with all the guys who had the flu and all the guys on COVID reserve, there was never a question that they weren't going to have enough players to play. You're not going to have some of your best players, but you're going to have enough players. But they're going to play the games. So from the players' perspective, they can look at it and say, we don't need to do anything because the money's still going to come in. The games are still going to be played. We don't have to separate ourselves from our families for a month for no additional consideration because we're still going – to have these games played no matter how many guys test positive i think that's the attitude that the nfl would be dealing with if the nfl tries to get the players to agree that they're going to have some sort of a soft bubble in the postseason whether it's the final eight final four final two whatever the case may be they need to be thinking about that because i have a feeling the upcoming holiday season is not going to make the situation better it's only going to make it worse yeah, and people are gathering, and again, you know, the other variants are coming in, and they spread more rapidly, and all of those things that we're seeing the uptick on the positive COVID cases. And we all thought, well, after the vaccines came in, we're over it. Sean McVay talked about today all the guys that they've had who've tested positive uh, are vaccinated. So I have a proposal, Mike. I have a different proposal than a bubble, and I've thought a lot about this today. 
You've talked about at some point the NFL is going to treat it like the flu, whether it's next year or whatever. At some point they treat it like the flu. Guys go out there, they play if they're well enough to play. So what if you mandate, which they mandated, as we know, tier one, tier two staff have to get the booster shot by December 27th. They released that yesterday. So what if you tell the players, what if the, both sides agree, because it takes the NFLPA to agree with the NFL, if you get the booster, now if you've had COVID, we know that they, what is it, 90 days or whatever it is, they don't have to test. But if you get the booster, if you haven't had COVID recently, you get the booster, we're not going to test you at all, period. We're not going to test you. Unless you have symptoms, we're not going to test you. At that point, a lot of players probably are playing with COVID, but frankly, they're asymptomatic. And the NFL has said repeatedly, we don't think, we have no evidence that it can be transmitted during a game. Well, and I believe that that is something they need to consider for one very important reason. I tweeted that notion today that the NFL should let asymptomatic yeah. players who are positive still play in games because, again, there is no evidence it transmits in that setting. And as a practical matter, Odo Beckham Jr. test positive today yeah. for COVID-19. Do we really think he was negative last night when he was no. playing in the game between the Rams and the Cardinals? No. T.J. Watt. One of the reasons that he didn't have a great game against the Bengals. He tested positive the next day, and in hindsight, I've talked to some folks who think, yeah, he was probably not feeling well, but he fought through it. You know, not everyone is going to tap out like Ben Roethlisberger did. I'm not saying that he shouldn't have. I'm just saying that not everyone is going to make that decision. It's an individual decision. Some guys aren't going to feel well, but they're not going to miss playing a game of football. There's only so many of those days in their life that they're going to have, and they're not giving one of them up. And there's a certain amount of human denial. I don't want to find out I have COVID. I don't want to be unavailable to show up for work, to show up in practice, to have the season potentially derailed because of it. You got to process a lot of things if all of a sudden you're not feeling well. Like you don't want to know if you have it. You think you can fight your way through it. You think it's not it. So my point is, a lot of guys are playing with COVID already that are symptomatic. The current, and, and look, I understand that the NFL created a looser protocol for vaccinated players in order to persuade players to get vaccinated. But the reality is the testing regimen for the vaccinated allows players to be in the building without masks, on the practice field without masks, at games without masks, or any other precautions anywhere. If they're positive yeah. and you, you only find out in your once per week test. So there's already a weird, glaring, logical flaw in the protocol. So why don't they add what really isn't a flaw? It's a logical, strategic acknowledgement that it's not going to transmit on the field. So if you're positive and you're asymptomatic, you can play. Why would they not want to let guys play who are positive and asymptomatic and I think some of it's political and some of it's PR but at some point that's going to go out the window you got to let guys play who are healthy enough to play well and I think sooner than later Mike I mean it, it, because here's the deal we got a ton of teams now and enhanced protocols when they go to enhanced protocols they're testing every single day not on Mondays if you're vaccinated you now get tested every single day if you get tested every single day it's just like TJ Watt he would have probably been caught before the Bengals game so then he would have missed that game that week. So we're going to catch more and more of these guys testing positive simply because they're testing more often now. A lot of teams have gone into this. And, you know, with the Rams, with what happened with them yesterday, losing Tyler Higby, frankly, who ended up being a false positive and should have gotten to play as David Johnson should have gotten to play because he was a false positive Saturday, didn't play Sunday, came back on the active roster Monday. But the Rams were able to overcome those two losses and the other losses of players that they had. The NFL is going to say, oh, well, it doesn't matter. You can still win without those players, including a big name player like Jalen Ramsey. But wait until it happens in the playoffs, a team loses is its quarterback can you imagine two or three days before the game tom brady testing positive for covid oh my gosh this is going to be a scandal a controversy everything else if that happens in the postseason yeah and they have to figure out a way to manage this it's something that's not going away 
They really have a lot of work to do here. And, you know, last night when the NFL sends out the memo saying Tier 1 and Tier 2 staff have to be boosted by the 27th of December, and it was very vague on players, they haven't reached an agreement with the union as to whether or not players need to be vaccinated again, get a booster shot in order to still be regarded as vaccinated. There's some unnecessary push and pull, I think, and it's unfortunate. And I'd like to think that they can come together for the good of the game and figure out how best to handle this problem because it's not getting any better. Again, it's only getting worse. I wrote something earlier today and I said something earlier today on PFT Live about the issue of fake vaccination cards, something that the NFL frankly doesn't care about. We talked about not caring. They don't care. They don't want to find out how many fake vaccination cards there are. And the more teams that are in enhanced protocols, it doesn't matter because everyone's being tested every day. Anyway, everyone's wearing masks. Anyway, there's no longer a benefit to being vaccinated when the stakes are raised for a given team. But the run of the mill, average normal situation, if there are more contagious variants if this omicron thing is starting to make its way around and i feel like once we hear about it it's already ripped through the population anyway if you care about minimizing the spread and if you believe as i've been led to believe that people who have it who are vaccinated are less contagious than the people who have it who aren't vaccinated they should care about finding fake vaccination cards they should care about vetting the 20 percent of players who got their vaccinations away from team facilities. And someone raised a good point with me today, because the reason after the Antonio Brown thing fell in their lap, that they didn't vet all the vaccination cards of those who got their shots away from the team facility, they determined by talking to the teams that the rate of positive results for those who got their shots on site is the same as those who got their shots off site. And somebody raised with me today the question of whether those percentages still hold now that the numbers have shot up. And maybe they should take another survey. Maybe they should call around again and ask. And maybe every time a guy tests positive, they should say, if he's vaccinated, was it an on-site shot or an off-site shot? And I think any time a guy tests positive who was off-site, that's when they should. I mean, maybe one of these is going to fall into their laps again, Shireen. I just don't think they care Mm -hmm. enough to do a full sweep because they, I, I believe at some level are afraid of what they're going to find out. Yeah. It wouldn't be that hard to do as you've pointed out because the 80% who got their shots on site, you know, those were legit. So you throw all those out. So you've got 20% of those who are vaccinated, which last we heard was at 94%. I think it was, that was a while ago, but you throw all the, those who got it on site out. So it's not that many players, relatively speaking, who you would have to look into, look into their vaccination cards. But to me, that's significant. I mean, if, if they're using fake car, first of all, it's against law. But if you're using a fake card, that just means that you don't care about your teammates or your team or anything else because you're just trying to take care of, of number one uh, and, and not take the not take the shots so you know something needs to be done there to at least look at those to say who was really vaccinated who wasn't because i guarantee you those three players on the buccaneers two of whom are still on the buccaneers those aren't the only ones in this league we all know that and how many coaches and otherwise how many of those guys are involved too i guarantee you there's some of those who probably turned in fake cards well, Shereen, I think that's one of the things they don't want to find out, apart from the raw numbers. And Sims and I were talking earlier today about, I said an over under 85.5. If I said it at 85.5 league-wide fake vaccination cards among players, would you take over or under? What would be your guess? Over or under 85.5? You're, you're, you're saying that 85.5% were legit, right? No, 85.5 players have submitted fake vaccination cards league-wide. Oh, over I see what under. you're saying. Uh, I'd still probably go over. Yeah, I go over too. So maybe the number needs to be higher. Yeah. You need to you need to keep pump, pumping it up until you're not really sure whether you'd go over or under. But I, I think that that it's uh, it's not an aberration. They just got lucky. If Antonio Brown pays that yeah. live-in chef's bill, we never know about it. Right. Just like if Aaron Rodgers never tests positive, we never know that they were allowing him know. to show up in the press room without a mask on twice a week. I mean, it really is despicable when you think about it. The level of negligence that the league was applying to this process. It's, it's just words on paper. Well, now it's biting them in the ass 
And the question is, what are they going to do about it? But as to your point with coaches, I think they don't want to find out one very important thing. And I don't know whether or not this is the case, but I don't think it's beyond the realm of possibility that maybe for some of these teams, the fake vaccination card hookup was an assistant coach who's an anti-vaxxer who feels very strongly that it's all bogus and it's all phony and I can't believe they're wasting our time with this. Don't worry about the vaccine. You don't want those nanobots in your body. I know a guy, I'll get you a fake card. I mean, we've heard all sorts of other things over the years about coaches, you know, scalping Super Bowl tickets and doing, I mean, look, you you can't put it past them. You can't. So I don't think they want to find out, Shireen, because the problem is if you end up putting that stuff out there, you're going to have Congress. They're not... You're going to think the Washington football team investigation is a walk in the park. If you have a public health crisis you've created because you established a clear temptation for players and coaches and others to have fake vaccination cards and you did nothing to vet them. We talked earlier today about the Tampa Bay cards and it hadn't thought of me or it hadn't thought of me. It hadn't occurred to me until Chris said it. These guys are submitting cards from a site 80 miles away. Like, didn't that set off? Yeah. Uh, a red light for somebody in Tampa? Like, why did three guys go 80 miles away to get their vaccination? So they they don't want to know what they would find out if they did a full sweep of all of the cards that were submitted by the people who got their vaccines off-site. Yeah, and it's this is the thing. It's not go, None of this is going away, and it's only going to get worse over the next month to six weeks. So I don't know what the answer is. I do know that they need to figure it out very, very quickly. Owners' meetings have started here uh, this week. I'll be over there tomorrow. We'll see what they say. But they've got to figure out something so you don't have a quarterback in the postseason testing positive for COVID two or three days before the game a uh, playoff game and, and missing that game. If that happens, I mean, I'm just telling you that we can't, they just can't have that happen and you can't postpone games. So I don't know what the answer is, but they better figure out what the answer is. Well, you're right. And every time it feels like they have it under control, there's something else that yeah. happens. And we've been lucky most of the season. That's part of the reason for the complacency. We're all human beings. We do get fatigue over certain issues. And we get a little relaxed. And especially the younger guys. Sim said this from the get-go. They're not going to care about COVID. They're not worried about it. They don't view it as something right. that's a serious threat to their health. They, they, they view it as an annoyance. And they don't want to mess with it. And uh, the league's got a mess right now. And... Uh, they, they got to figure out a way to get it under control or for the postseason, maybe revise these protocols. I know they're very big on not making changes that would affect the integrity of a season. You know, like if all of a sudden they would say asymptomatic players who are positive can play, that's not fair because they've been knocking players out all year long who were asymptomatic and COVID positive. Maybe it's something you can do for the postseason. Maybe, I mean, they can do whatever they want, right. and we see them make it up as they go all the time. Yeah. This is the ultimate situation to justify making it up as you go. And I think that would be a smart thing for them to consider. You can keep the guys who are positive and asymptomatic away from everyone else, but when it's time to show up and play, you, you go out on the field without fear that the virus is going to be transmitted to anyone else. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.